Hi everyone, it's Olivia from Goldie Bunches and in this video I'm going to just be talking about um, the humble, very pretty, very practical, very easy granny square. Now I've done a couple of videos on the granny square and the first one I did on showing you how to do a granny square is in three parts. So, you know, I think that I'm sort of going to be updating that video as well. So I'm trying to make it into one video as opposed to three parts, although I will keep up that that three part video because it's a nice gentle pace so if you're a beginner you might want to go back and have a look at that that video just those three videos to take it at a nice easy pace if you just want somebody who wants to refresh yourself on how to do a granny square then this will probably be an ideal video for you um, but beginners do please watch this video because I'm going to talk about sort of a common problem that I think some people who are new to crochet um, probably run into because I know I certainly did when I were f first started to learn crochet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a very simple granny square which is this one and then I'm going to talk about what yours might look like and why you're thinking that it's not looking the same as mine. So we're going to just cover the granny square first and then I'm going to come back and talk about why yours might have wobbly sides or might be curling up a bit like this one. Okay so let's get on and show you how to do a very basic simple granny square. So for me if you've watched some of my previous videos you will have seen that I quite like to start most of my video, um, most of my projects with a, a simple magic loop. This replaces the need for um, knowing exactly how many chains to do at the beginning to work your stitches into because it will adjust automatically to the number of stitches that you put into this first round so let me show you how I would start with a magic loop and I've done a video on how to do that and I'll put a link to that down below and remember I use British terminology so I won't I'll be calling these trebles um, these stitches trebles and you may know them as a double so I'm going to chain three to replace my first treble and then I'm going to do another two trebles into that loop and then I'm going to chain three to make a corner. Now you can chain two or you can chain one but you will need to keep that corner consistent throughout the square that you're making. So I've done another three trebles, I'm going to chain three like so and do my three trebles so you can start to see the shape forming, chain three and then three more trebles like that. And then to finish that off I need to chain three and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that third chain that we did at the beginning like that. I'm going to pull that loop out so I can just take my hook out, set it to one side and deal with this middle bit. So with this magic loop we have this tail and you pull that tail bit and what it does is it adjusts to the, the width of the stitches that you've already placed into that, that loop and if you pull it tight you can see it makes a nice centre. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you how to do it if you want to start with chains that you make into a loop. So starting with a slip, up on, a slip knot on your hook, let's chain let's say four Four, and then you would make a slip stitch into that first chain which makes you a nice loop and then you work your stitches into, to, into that loop so you might want to make that a bit bigger I mean <laughs> goes to show I don't actually start that myth with that method unless I'm I really think it needs it but you know that's just how I start so 
I'm going to make that chain a bit longer. Let's give that six. And I've got links to videos down below on how to do all the basic stitches. So you can go back and watch those without me rushing through. I just want to really explain this granny square in one video. So I want to cover as many bases as possible. So that's a bit that's a better loop to work into. So there I would do three chains to replace my first treble. And then I would do into the, the rest of the stitches into that loop. So I did three chains on the corner. I'll do three trebles. Three, three trebles. see it's making the shape three chains three trebles into that loop and then three chains and then slip stitch into that first lot of chains we did at the beginning and I think there you can see that You've got the square shape, but the loop I made, I probably would have been alright with the four chains. So now I would have to undo that to get the nice uniform shape that I have done by starting with a magic loop. And that's why I like to use the magic loop. So it's up to you what you use, but I personally think that for a granny square, this method is the best way to start and that's just me you know it's there's no golden rule there's no set rule that's what works for me okay so I'm gonna redo that because I'm not happy with that and come back when I've got my first round done which I've just shown you using the magic loop so there we are there's my first round done of the granny square using the magic loop and I'm much happier with the way that looks you may want to have that big loop in the middle, that's up to you. But for me, that's what I prefer to see. So, now we're going to work on doing the next round. Which will be this round that we're working on here. So, if you wanted to change colour now for the next round, what you would do is you would tie off this end and you would put your yarn on your hook and start working from one of these corner spaces. But as I'm going to stay in this colour, what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first treble and slip stitch into the top of that second treble. And then we're going to slip stitch into that three chain space. And now we are positioned in the right place to start working our next round. So again, we're going to do three chains and then two more trebles into that space. And we're going to make a corner now. So on the previous round, I did three chains to make that corner. And to make the project look consistent and uniform, you will need to do three chains again. Or and I did mention that you could do two or one. And again, if you whatever those that number you choose to use, you should try and use that throughout the rest of the project. So now you haven't. Now we need to get from here to here. So in this in this example, I'm going to just do one chain, which will get me across the top of those three trebles from the round below. And then I will start working exactly the same way. Three trebles, three chains, three trebles and then I'll do one chain like that which will take me across the top of those three and I will repeat again 
like I did in the last corner. I'll just get some more yarn. And then I'm going to do one chain I'm going to do three chains my three trebles like so one chain and then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that third chain that I did at the beginning of that round and there we go, that's our second round completed. And you can just keep that nice and tight. When you've finished, you, you need to sew that together and make a nice firm knot so it doesn't come undone. But that's our second round done. And you can see that that second round pulled that first round into a nice finished off square shape. Like that. So, the next round to do again we want to work from this corner so if you want to change colour yarn you would sew off this end or tie off this end and then attach your next colour yarn to your hook and then start working from this corner but as I'm going to keep the same colour yarn I'm just going to get some more of the, the ball we're going to slip stitch into the top of the trebles like so and then once into that that corner space and then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat what we did in the corner that we did here and into this gap we're just going to do three trebles each time we're going to have one chain between them so let me just show you what I mean so three chains to replace our first treble a treble and a treble and then three chains and then three trebles and then one chain and then we're going to put the, th the, the three trebles into that space there and that's what you would do for all the other rounds that you would do from here on in Sorry. so one chain and then the three trebles into the corner three chains to make that corner and then three trebles again that was my air freshener that you just heard in the background <laughs> sorry about that okay so one chain and then you would repeat one chain and then you carry on working the corners so I won't carry on with that because I think you're getting the idea of what you would do and for all the other rounds that you would do you would carry on with that same that same principle three chains to make a corner and one chain to make that gap now like I said, you can use two chains or one chain to make that corner, but you would need to be consistent. And the same goes for this. So if you, you if you don't have any chain gap, then all the other rounds will be the same. You don't have a chain gap. If you use a different type of yarn, then you may need to introduce a chain here or there to make it you know for the different for the different yarn to make it look the same now that probably sounds a bit confusing so let me show you some examples of when you you, you have used too many chains okay so what we have here is a granny square but what i have done is i've put one chain i think it might have been two chains yeah i've done two chains to make the corner and then I've done three chains between each each gap. Now you can see that that isn't making a nice square shape like this one does. It's the same number of rounds, the same number of trebles, 
in each bit but the chains in the in between have made all the difference to it not looking like a square like this one does it's taking on a bit of a round shape and a bit bit wavy and you can see that the the gaps aren't so prominent so to fix that what you would do is you would think about maybe using less chains between each of the gaps maybe making another chain in that corner bit so you know it isn't a bad square it's just it's not very square shape it's not as got nice straight edges like this one has so if you were to use too few stitches you can see that this one has a bit of a curl again I've used the same number of trebles and the same number of rounds and you can see the difference in size I'll put that one down there you can see it's much smaller than this one now this one isn't such a bad shape it's got a nice sort of squarish shape to it it's definitely a lot firmer but the holes aren't so prominent so that might be quite a nice feature that you're looking for you may not you might not want that sort of whole holy look <laughs> that you get with this type of granny square so you know this one isn't a bad one it's just it's a bit firmer it feels a bit firmer it's not as flexible as this one might be nicer if you were covering something as opposed to having a blanket made out of squares and what I'm trying to say is you really want to play around with things and if your work looks like this you're not doing anything wrong you're just your pattern that you're following may might not suit the style of tension that you have so everything is flexible it's worth going back and having another go it doesn't take very long to undo and I think it, just taking out a few stitches and adding a few stitches here and there being consistent th throughout your project will make make your work nice and tidy and make it more square shaped so I, I hope you found this video helpful because I know I have seen some people sort of say oh now it doesn't look like yours or doesn't look like somebody else's it's not a question of you're doing anything wrong because your stitches are all the same as everybody else's it's just that you may have a few too many stitches here and there and just simply taking out one or two in places and adding them in another place will just make all the difference so there's my little quick <laughs> masterclass I think you might call it <laughs> on um granny squares so i really help, hope you found this video helpful i hope i haven't confused you at all and if you did find it helpful i'd really love a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed i would really love for you to subscribe and uh, keep in to, keep up to date with all the new videos that i will be bringing out so thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you soon please don't forget you can leave me messages down below I'll try to reply to them all and you can leave me suggestions for new videos okay thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon bye for now